Wildfire Podcast is an extension of Wildfire Ministries, an organisation that has a focus of igniting men and women of God into a deeper discipleship with Christ, instilling them with a passion to radically and relentlessly pursue Christ wherever that leads, that God's truth will spread like a wildfire. Hey guys, welcome to the Wildfire Podcast. And I have a very important question for Luke to start off with. Okay. Who do you think is going to win, Godzilla or King Kong? It's such a big question, but uh, you know what? It's not a big question. I, you know, I was told in advance what this question would be, and it's it's definitely going to be Kong. So that was a, a tough choice, maybe. No, well, not really. You find it quite easy to do it for Kong, but do you prefer the Old Testament or the New Testament? Look, the age old question that every Christian's <laughs> asked at some point. That was a way more difficult question than who's going to win, Kong or Godzilla. Very very different one. Um, like. You know what I mean? It's we gotta understand. You know, it's a very unfair question because it's one narrative. It's 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 one book, so it's like ripping a part of a book out and then asking, <laughs> "What's your favorite?" At the end of the start. Um, I love the Old Testament, but it's like New Testament. It's got Jesus manifesting himself, um, coming into human history publicly express himself because he comes in the Old Testament as well. So oh, we have, we have Jesus in the Old Testament as well. So I guess I'm sort of losing that. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I like the I like the New Testament. I love the teachings of Jesus. It's just so transformative. I love the epistles, and you know, I'm gonna say it. I love Revelation as well. I just think. Um, also, I'm. I do think the end of books are better than the start. So it's like that's okay. the conclusion. So uh, that's what I think. But yeah, see, what do you think? See, I'm one of those rare people who actually prefers the Old Testament. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. But that, that's that's the thing. Like, I don't know a lot of people who are the same. Why do you think that is? Um, Why is everyone like you? Look, are you <laughs> <laughs> numbers? Old Testament. They just, you know what I mean. It's like people tell, go read the Old Testament. It's amazing. They just go to like a really, you know what I mean. Yeah. You can't say it's a horrible book because it's the Word of God I, and I, everything I, is just full for teaching. I, I blame yearly Bible reading plans. <laughs> 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 everyone just goes for that. Exactly. It's just like a random verse out of context from like Joel. It's like or like <laughs> Malachi or something. Um. No. Uh. I think it's just a combination. Like whenever you think of numbers and you talk about, like it's giving you criteria for like the tabernacle and stuff. It's, people are, you know, a busy day at work or at school or something. They're like, I'm gonna get into some really light reading about the tabernacle. Yeah, so there's stuff. yeah, there's certain certain books or there's a lot of genealogies that appear. So I think people like just read a chapter or read get an area of the Bible and they're like they just take that as a representation for the whole thing, mm-hmm. which I think is not a good thing to do. Obviously, yes. Yeah. Um, you gotta understand that it's uh, that it's one narrative. So I think people just um, uh, context. They don't do enough context, and uh, I think they go to some of the more difficult passages. And uh, I don't think they <laughs> uh, pray about it and get the actual author of the Bible and his input, which is God. Yeah. Um, I think it's it could be pr- problematic the way in which we actually practically study, and the way we, the way we approach it, and then. New Testament can be self-explanatory. It's the the narrative of Jesus' life and his teachings and his ethics and and obviously, like the words of Jesus, it pulsates. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's it's transformative. Like look yeah. at the movement that it created. So people are automatically drawn to it. You know, yeah. atheists and agnostics are drawn to it. So of course, yeah. Christians with the Spirit of God are more inclined to draw to it. But you know what I mean? So and that's what I sort of yeah. think. What and at you... face value, anyway, the only hard book at face value in the New Testament is Revelation. Yes. Everything else you can read once once over and just get lots of lessons from it and enjoy it and kinda of understand what's going on. Yeah, Revelation is such a difficult book. Like Yeah. But then it, and then but in the Old Testament there's at least oh I'd say people can name like ten books that Exactly would, would be rev- Revelations of, of the Old Testament. So it's boring, but you know what I mean? It's just about getting involved in it, getting stuck in mm-hmm. and and you you know what I mean there has to be a first step. You have to begin somewhere. So, you know what I mean? People like always say, oh, wait till like, I'm 30 or something. You begin now, create a, create a foundation, and then that'll be a springboard. Yeah. Uh, a biblical springboard for the Old, for the old Testament. Mm. But, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, what, what, why do you think that, though? Why do you think people are more inclined to sort of... No, I think it's... Oh, it's definitely difficult. I don't, I don't deny that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think people don't really... Don't really appreciate it because they don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, the New Testament again like you said narrative letters revelation that's how it's made up the Old Testament you've got um, well genealogies is <laughs> what a lot of people go to um, you've, got nar- you've got narrative as well um, you've got law you've got prophecy 
you got like, a bit of romance in there, which Luke and I were just discussing. The New Testament doesn't actually have any romance that we can think of, except Christ and the Church. Exactly. Uh, it's beautiful as well. Which, but oh, that, that, that's in the Old Testament as well. So yeah. it's like, sort of like... Yeah, so if, you, if, you, if romance is your thing, you go like the Old Testament as well. Yeah. Um, but I think it's just a lack of understanding of what the Old Testament actually actually is. Um, so the way the way I would usually break it down is I don't actually even like calling it the Old Testament because as soon as you call something old, it's just not really. It doesn't seem relevant. I'd even that is such a good point. Yeah, I it, actually it, never knew that. What's the origin of that? Or is the Old Testament New Testament? Is that in the Bible? Do we know that? No. That's not in the Bible. I don't think so. I've, I actually never thought about that before. No, well, I, don't th- I think it's probably just early church. You, well, you even know that your church history better than me, look, because you did a level RE, but. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I was just titles given by the church. I, I don't think Fascinating. it's. Fascinating. Because the New Testament doesn't, certainly doesn't call itself the New Testament. And then even if you look at the Jewish community, like, I, I almost prefer their names for the Old Testament. Yeah, they call yeah, it, yeah. Well, the Bible Project, Tim Mackey would use Hebrew Bible, which I, I quite like, or else the, Jew, the Jews would have the Tanakh. Uh-huh. Which um, it's a slightly different order, but it's the same books that, of the Old Testament. So to- real, real raspiness to that. Yeah, so again, you can hear it. Just go into the mic a bit more there. And just Tanakh. Oh, uh, so yeah. So that's that's a, 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 a ASMR for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's that's like so they would have their Torah, which is the law, um, Nevaim, which is um, prophets, and Ketuvim, which is writing. So they would just bring it up slightly differently, but um, they would call the Old Testament something different and have a different order. So I kind of prefer those names. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a second. Yeah. So the Jews had their, had their, had their, uh, like, talk a bit more about, like, so that was drawn up by the Jews. It was, it was recognised. So obviously, if we take ourselves back into that time, into the time of, of Moses, etc., these documents are being written and they're being recognised by people as divine authority through, uh, you know what I mean, miracles and their ability to, to perform miracles and the authority of what they're saying actually came true. Again, all these signs were attesting to this is the word of God. Okay, but you're, are you saying that it was formulated differently to the way we have it now in the Bible? Like the order and stuff? So the order I'm actually, I'm, I'm not too clued in about. I, obviously the order is different now. So um, if you go and pick up a Tanakh in a, a bookstore, it'll be a different order than the Old Testament. The books are the exact same, just a slightly different order. Yeah, content's um, same, the order's different. Oh yeah, the, the exact same content. They've just okay. ordered it slightly differently, which again, doesn't really make a difference. I think it was, the, again, the early church that reordered the Old Testament to have it more categorical. Yes. Um, yeah. So you what might... was that like? like? That's like the Council of Nicaea. Possibly thing. that. Yeah. yeah. Was it three hundred AD? Yeah. Yeah. Three hundred, four hundred, something like that. Yeah. But people think people make it. They there's contention over this as well. But people think it was imposed. So mm-hmm. uh, the Council of Nicaea literally gathered the documents and imposed that as. But there's a, another view which is the recognized view, which is uh, like these are the letters that were written by say Paul mm-hmm. at the at that time between sixty to hundred AD around the time the Gospels were written around that time as well. That was recognised by the church as divine documents that yes. was there right throughout. And then you just have right up to Revelation, which is written by like John around. That's contentious as well. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but, like, but like people around 90 AD. So you had all the documents written like, you know what I mean, in like the first the first century. Mm-hmm. And so everyone knew what the divine, it was really just like they got it in one compressed, easy accessible yeah, so, book at that council. Yeah, even, that's even the difference between the, the, the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. The Hebrew Bible is written over about well, it covers a period of four hundred, four sorry, four thousand years of um, history. So that's what it covers. It's not written over as long a period as that, but it's, that's what it covers. New Testament's what seventy years ish, like something like that. So it's it's so much shorter. That's right. Um, so there's so much more history packed into the the, the Hebrew Bible. So you have to give it some uh, leeway for being a wee bit longer. Um, but even in terms of, in terms of the order, just to address that quickly, the most common example is Daniel. So Daniel in our Old Testament is grouped with the prophets. Okay. But in the Tanakh, it's grouped with the writings as such, so it's not with the prophets. Mm-hmm. Um, exact same book, just different titles. So it doesn't really mean a lot. It's just, uh, yeah, exactly. just an example of what they would call just it. Just to do with the context of that time, the way yeah. people um, uh, were accustomed to it as, as a way of reading and a way of understanding it yeah. uh, a bit better. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So why read it? Why read the Old Testament? Okay, I'm sitting here and it's like, you know, the New Testament's good enough. No? The teachings of Jesus... Um, the epistles, Revelation, but why not just, we don't really need it, right? No. Well, we, we need to even, so Jesus' main title is Christ. Okay. Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's right. And like, what does Christ mean? It's the Greek translation of Messiah. Um, but who even is the Messiah? That's a, that's a Jewish term, which you would get from the Hebrew Bible. Yes. So you don't really understand the full implication of who Christ is claiming, or who Jesus is claiming to be, if you don't know your, your Hebrew Bible. Um, and you can obviously learn this from a few Sunday school lessons and things like that, but if you want to get the full gravity of, yes, of the Yes, you don't need to go, you don't need to become a Hebrew scholar. No. 
is okay. what you're trying to say. No, to, to understand the, the basic level of anything, you don't yeah. need to be a, a, a biblical scholar. Yeah. But if, it's like anything. If you want to learn more and have more, have it, make it have more meaning in your life, you need to actually study it in more detail. Okay. Um, but that, so that's just in, in regards to who Christ is. Um, that's why the Hebrew Bible is important. But mm-hmm. it, it's, it's important for so many more other reasons as well. Like um, you've got... It, so it, it covers a vast range of topics. You've got history, prophecy, a bit of romance. Um, you got genealogies. So many of these. It's different got wars, things. conflict. Oh yeah, wars and conflict. Um, you could create a sex series out of it. To be honest with you, honest, on I, Netflix, it's been done before. Actually, I I want I want an R-rated version of the the, the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I want. Instead of Game of Thrones, that's. It would be like an eighteen wouldn't even like that's crazy. An eighteen wouldn't even suffice. You need something beyond it. Would be like a plus yeah. thirty. You got <laughs> some kind of gruesome things in, yeah. in it. Oh, crazy. I honestly, someone needs to make that. Um, hopefully Maybe not. we will. <laughs> Wildfire <laughs> movies is next. <laughs> um, yeah, but so there's so many like stories like that, just war stories and awesome things like that. Like that, the New Testament doesn't have a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. And then in terms of actually why it's important for Christians, the main like the founder and finisher of our faith is Jesus. So how does he treat um, the the quote unquote Old Testament? Um, so he, he quotes it tons of times. Um, if you read any sort of Bible with hyperlinks and things like that, you can see he quotes it in regards to the Pharisees and with issues about the law. He quotes it, on, especially quite a bit in the Sermon on the Mount, talking about ethical issues. Yeah. Um, he talks it, about it um, with, in regards to who, who he actually is, his person. And kind of specifically in RE, we learned a lot about the temptation. So each time Christ is tempted, he talks about um, it is as it is written. And he quotes from Deuteronomy three times. And Deuteronomy is one of those books that we group in with Leviticus <laughs> and Numbers as not being very important and just having lots of laws. The avoid group. <laughs> the avoid, yeah, but you can skip this no, and move on to Joshua kind of stuff. But Jesus quoted from it three times when the devil tried to tempt him. So that alone shows it has a quite a bit of importance. And that's true because the Bible does say in Philippians 2 that we are called to follow the example of Jesus and yes. as he lived. And yes. 2 Corinthians 3 also says that anyone who says that they live uh, in God must live as Jesus lived. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? If you take those verses and Jesus was using the Old Testament and Jesus was well-read in the Old Testament and, you know what I mean, that was far less accessible. Obviously, Jesus had to memorise large chunks and passages. So, yeah. it's uh, we need to follow the example of Jesus and if we want to do that to the full extent, then we need to know the Old Testament. Yeah. Even whenever he was... Say. What age was he whenever he was uh, in, lost in the temple, was it? 12? That's true. Yeah, was, was it? it? Was something like that? <laughs> yeah, it was, was like ten or twelve. Ten or twelve. It was definitely a, like a child to some degree. Um, yeah, of course. and he, the Pharisees were amazed, or the teachers of the law were amazed at his actual um, like skill and how well he knew his, his Hebrew Bible. Um, so even as a as a child, we're a bit behind that. <laughs> us being yeah, exactly. 19, twenty, but um, something to strive strive towards. Um, mm. and then like those verses you could look. Obviously, we are meant to look towards Jesus, and if you look at how he actually exposits the Bible when he's with, um, so he's, he dies and he's resurrected, but before anyone kind of knows, he's on the road to Emmaus, and you can find this in Luke 24, um, and just to quote an exact verse, verse 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So Jesus was able to talk to these two, two disciples after he'd risen again and just explain the whole, so Moses, that's just a way of saying the law, and then obviously the prophets, and all the scriptures, so that's, that's all of the Old Testament, yeah. and just say, here's where I am in this. Here's how I, here's how I filter <laughs> in, and it's that so, is that's crazy. Yeah, because that is crazy. Because it's like Jesus was obviously marking this transition from the old into the new, yes. the uh, Israel to the church and his resurrection. Huge, mm-hmm. like, like it's a catalyst for complete change and transformation. Okay, and then as soon as he's done this, wh- what's his teaching? He's like, go back to the Old Testament. He gets saying, look at the full narrative, look at its completion in me. So, you know what yeah. I mean? We have, to get, we have to look at the full thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Old Testament only helps to show who Jesus is even more so. So you, you get the old example where, he, oh yes, he's the Messiah. But there's so many more titles used of God and even Jesus in the Old Testament that we can really learn. Yeah, like people think of the term Yahweh as a title. Mm-hmm. But like there's like Yahweh Yaira, Yahweh Shama, Yahweh Sekenya. There's like seven titles just about Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. There's so many titles for him. Yeah, and the, the New Testament does a great job of showing Jesus and his humanity. Uh, but yeah. the Old Testament shows God it's as God. 
Um, oh, obviously, it's divinity. As divinity. Obviously, the New Testament does a lot of that as well. I'm not shying away from that. But yeah, the Old course. Testament... It's just a different emphasis. Yes. It's... Yes, yeah, so you can learn so much more about the character of God. Um, so, are you saying Jesus is in the Old Testament? Because I think we've alluded to that, but it's like, because mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? If I'm sitting re- watching this podcast right now, I don't like go to the Old. I can't like put my finger on an Old Testament passage and be like, yeah, Jesus is here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As I can in there. Yeah. So it was just briefly because I know that's a, it's yeah. So it's like a separate topic. hashtag map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll just drop us in a wee quick explanation. Um, so obviously you got prophecies like in Second uh, Samuel chapter seven. Um, it's a prophecy it says David's heir will inherit the throne and you can be like oh his heir is probably Jesus that's looking back that's how we would interpret yeah, yeah. it but there are more clear passages where a certain character appears called the angel of the Lord yeah yeah Um, I think he appears with no sorry Joshua when Joshua is about to come into the land the angel of the Lord okay. appears yeah and Joshua bows down and worships him yeah but any other angel you'll notice will not let himself be worshipped yes because all worship, worthy. yeah all worship is due to God yeah exactly so the angel of the Lord has divine qualities yeah and without going into too much... Yeah, you compare that with the other passage, like Jacob, yeah. who's Jacob, Jacob wrestled wrestle, with. wrestled God. Yeah, and, and yet, passages and judges and, and yet, stuff. And yet the Torah says, Ma, you shall not see God. Yeah. No man shall see the face of God. Yeah, but there's yet, so these, many passages. These, so many characters come into the contact with God face to face. But it's also like apologetics and stuff, so like, what do Jews do with that? That's sort of one of the, mm-hmm. one of the points that sort of um, subverts the truth of Judaism, so it's just not... It's yeah. not true. Yeah, another, <laughs> it's not completed. Another another wee teaser for future episodes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just throwing so many stuff out. I'm sorry. Go back. It's the first episode. Looks exciting. <laughs> Go back to it. Um, there's so much. That's what I'm saying. This is yeah. what this is highlighting. You know what I mean, there's so much we can talk about. So much. So yeah, but that that's just a wee, a wee uh, hint of Christ in the Old Testament. So again, we'll maybe cover that in future episodes. But it's something to look for, um, because Jesus is obviously able to explain that to his disciples in uh, in in the future, uh, or sorry, in the in the road to Emmaus, um. I think the kind of final verse I'd like to talk about is 2 Timothy 3, 16. So it says, All scripture is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. And like as you're aware, this is a New Testament passage. So when it says all scripture, it's not self-referential. It's talking about oh, yeah. the scripture that they would have, which is... Yes. The yeah, Hebrew because Bible. that's a, that's a letter. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, people would have, like, a full account of, like, the epistles we do. It's mm-hmm. not formulated, because, remember, that came with the council, uh, yes. actual accessible established version. So mm-hmm. it's definitely referring to uh, the Old Testament there. Yeah. So that, that just shows, like, these are things P- Paul's telling to Timothy, who's a young leader in the church. He's saying, this is what the Old Testament is useful for. It's for teaching. So, obviously, we can teach in the Old Testament for reproof and correction. So if someone says something wrong, we can show them from the Old Testament why they're wrong about Jesus. Yeah. Um, specifically. Uh, training in righteousness um, and that you may be competent and equipped for every good work. Um, so it's like... Yeah, it's there's so much. Like, if you think of even the chat, like the book of Proverbs, okay, if you take that isolated, you can do that out of context sometimes. It's like one chapter in itself contains so many truths and principles that we should apply to our lives that are so useful and that we should be... De- like it talks about being self-disciplined. It talks about working hard. Uh, it talks about submission, talks about what it is to be a woman in Proverbs 30, 31 and some of the characteristics of that. Uh, oh, there's so many. Yeah. There's so many. Pa- yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. And the, dis- the, like, the discipline that they give you, you know what I mean? You, you hear snippets of it in the New Testament, yeah. but if you want to get full expansion on that, you know what I mean? You, you can, you know what I mean? They complement each other so well. And if you want to understand the New Testament, like there's so many principles in the New Testament, like circumcision, like that's a big debate in the early church, circumcision. Yeah. And so many things like that, even baptism. And to fully understand those, you need to actually understand their context in the Old Testament exactly, first. Exactly. Yeah, arguments for infant baptism do stem back yeah. to the Old Testament. So another another chaser for future episode. Yeah, baptism. exactly. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. We're yeah. So and then the fact alone that the verse says all Scripture is breathed out by God. So the fact that it's breathed out by God, uh, the Hebrew Bible gives yeah, yeah. it already infinite value. Because exactly. that's, that's, that's crazy. crazy. You know what I mean? So you're talking about if we even go back to the Numbers passage about the tabernacle, that their verse was breathed out by God. Okay, so that was given to us for a specific reason, or genealogies, that verse was given to us for a specific reason. So whenever reading God's word and you go back to the Old Testament, remember that all of that was breathed by God and is there. Um, it has a specific utility. So genealogy is very good for, you know, historians because they can trace back and, and are good in that regard. So that could be, that gets use there, but yeah. just understand that it's breathed by God. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's- that's crazy. So that's kind of why I love the Old Testament. I think hopefully in future episodes we'll get into some more yeah. passages and stuff. You convinced me. You convinced me. No, yeah. I'm just. Yeah, I, can't, I, know, I know you love. Listen, the Old Testament. you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> just. I'm gonna the Old Testament, New Testament. I'm gonna just completely destroy that. I'm gonna say it's what just. 
it is one narrative. It is mm-hmm. one book. I'm just going to say I love, I love the Bible. I love... Unified story of the Yeah, the Bible as... Yeah. It's just... It's amazing. So... But at least we can include... Well, we have a bit of time. Yeah. So we can talk... We talk... I, <laughs> I was talking to Peter about if I could... If I should include this, if I could. Because obviously the prophecies, the prophecies that appear in the Old Testament that are... So it's... What, what's that there? The Old Testament... You know, the revealed thing. Like the... The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Is that right? Oh, yes. And then the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Yes, yes. exactly. So, that, but we're calling someone. <laughs> Shout out to you, anyone. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's so many prophecies. And then the one, like, go to Daniel. My goodness. Like, you love Daniel. Daniel's my favorite book in the Old Testament. So, well, oh, yeah. you, you need a bit of help if you haven't studied it before. But exactly. definitely, um, there's plenty I need of help. resources I need out help. there. I'm glad you're here. But one of the most amazing prophecies, Daniel 9. Is that right? Yeah. End of Daniel chapter 9, yes. Yeah. Okay, so... And the angel comes to Daniel. Is it the angel Gabriel? I think, it? I think it's Gabriel from Mary, yeah. So yeah. the angel comes to Daniel, okay, and and it, he gives Daniel this prophecy, and it's basically talking about whenever they would the Jews because this was during uh, their exile, um, it was a Babylonian exile, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, during the exile, that uh, the prophecy was that they could return whenever they would return. They were allowed to return and start to rebuild. Actually, start to rebuild. Mm-hmm. Whenever that was decreed, whenever that was made legislation official. Um, that that was like the stopwatch. You can begin. And 173,888 days later, Jesus would come. Yes. The Messiah, uh, the Redeemer, the one who would restore. Um, so that's, that's, that's just crazy. Wait a second, that's crazy. Because yeah. it's like, if that's true, then wow. Like the authority of that. Because Daniel's written, you know what I mean? Like how many years? 500? 600 odd years. Yeah, five, yeah. 600 years before Jesus comes. So, and we have the exact dates. You can trace this. This has been done. On the 14th of March, 445 BC. That was the decree of Artaxerxes. Yeah, King Artaxerxes decreed that they could go back and that Re- they could rebuild. rebuild the temple. Okay, so according to this prophecy, the stopwatch begins. Mm-hmm. 173,888 days later brings you uh, to the 6th of April, 32 AD. And what happens on that day? Jesus, Jesus rides, rides in into Jerusalem on a donkey. On a donkey. As what the? That is crazy. That is a crazy. That's crazy. And that's just one. And there's like, I don't know how many, but there's 300 oh. plus prophecies. Oh, yeah, is there a thousand? I don't know. There's a lot. Read the Bible and find out. Read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Next day. <laughs> yes, yeah, send us all the prophecies that appear in the Old Testament. Like, that's just one out of so many. And it's just like, it's just amazing. Like, that is just, that's absolutely crazy. That is just, that's divine. That's true. Um, But... But yeah, so is there anything else? Is there any other favourites? We've talked about like in Genesis, like that's the creation story. Amazing, yeah. The creation narrative. Exodus again, like whole Prince, Prince Egypt stuff. Yeah, let's just run through quickly. <laughs> we have time. <laughs> just quick. We're there, just quickly. We don't have to do all of them because yeah. I got, once we get to the minor problem, it's, it gets a bit foggy at the minor problem, yeah. to be yeah. honest. But you know what I mean? You've got Exodus, you've got the people, captivity. You've got the laws, which again, everyone's least favorite part, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Yeah. But there's lots of good stuff in yeah, there. So, it, it just, like you have so to much. work hard to get out and yeah. listen to good Bible teachers, but it uh-huh. is in there. Um, and then you've got Joshua judges some well. Joshua's yeah. not too dark. Josh, Josh is great. Like a lot Josh of military conflicts. Yeah. Like if you just if you love war conflict, like that's amazing. Great military strategies. It's just yeah. so interesting. It's like a oh yeah okay mm-hmm. keep going. Judges Sorry. is like the dark. It'd be it'd be like the Game of Thrones type stuff. It's like the darkest book yeah. in the Bible probably. <laughs> the failure of people. The lapse of just yeah. morality. Yeah. Uh huh. And then you've got like first and second Samuel, the story of the dynasty of kings being installed in Israel. Yeah, exactly. And then you've got kings themselves and then you've got yeah. chronicles, which is documenting. It's like actually chronicling. Yeah. <laughs> it's a chronicle of what had actually taken place in history. And it's just so many amazing. Like we talked about Gideon at the start and stuff. And yeah. So many amazing stories. And then you got Psalms, like Psalms, 150 Psalms. All the, all the poetry and so- Song of Solomon. Some, Song of some, Solomon. Some people really like Romance. That. <laughs> but it's a beautiful, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful book. You know what I mean? Talking about what we'll it is get, being we'll get, covenant we'll get, and marriage. Yeah, we'll get looked to talk about that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so experienced in that. <laughs> that's sarcasm no and uh, oh yeah there's so much then there's minor the minor prophets that are just L- scattered lots of great lessons in there yeah again. scattered throughout yeah. the history and you got Christophanes Theophanes you've got prophecies history romance just all of these things that are just jam packed into yeah. the Old Testament and it literally has it you can't pick a theme that, yeah. the, that it doesn't have yeah. and then of course the New Testament is the fulfillment of that mm. and it's just the complete story. Yeah. So well, yeah, just don't don't dive straight in without any help. Like if you haven't studied the Yeah, so practically what would you say? Now that they've heard this and they're like, okay, the Old Testament does sound <laughs> pretty awesome because <laughs> it is the word of God. What do you okay, what what do I do now? So Bible Project of Great Resources. Before you read a book in the Old Testament, go on the Bible Project, search the title of the book and just watch it gives you a breakdown of the chapters, what the purpose behind the book is. And um even 
any good Bible commentary, you've got Zondervan. Most Bibles will probably have a wee commentary below, so if there are difficult verses, you can kind of look at that and understand what's what's going on in the passage, because some of the stuff can be quite confusing. And don't dig straight into Leviticus. Don't challenge yourself like that. I've yeah. tried it. It doesn't really work. Okay. Um, start Genesis or yeah. um, even the Psalms or something. Uh-huh. Or Daniel, if yeah. you want. Daniel's amazing. Because uh-huh. yeah, it's history to begin with. So just well. get a good firm grip on like the New firm Testament, grip. the teaching of Jesus, and then, you know what I mean, start... Uh, in the Old Testament and just look at all the resources like there's podcasts and stories and Bible Project and and another and, experience of Christians running like we want to start yeah. conversations around the Bible so if yeah, you know other wisdom, Christians just, just there's so much so New Testament get secondary sources and just begin just start because you have to start somewhere and just remember that you've got the author of the book living inside of you if you're a Christian like the God of the universe so if you're misunderstanding something you know what I mean pray ask because God says just ask and if any of you lacks wisdom says in James this is James right uh, I think so. Yeah, if any of you lacks wisdom, uh, then you just ask and go and God will give. So, okay, Peter, do you want to wrap us up there? I'll wrap us up. So that's okay. uh, our first episode finished, and we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>